So, I am Eitan Reiter. <laughs> it's me. Uh, I am, uh, apparently, I am uh, 38 years old. Um, I live in uh, the Krayot, which is close to Haifa, which is the north of Israel. Of course, all of Israel is maybe six hours drive, so it doesn't really matter north or south, but let's just say that it's one hour from Tel Aviv, which most people know. It's a pretty, it's a smaller city than Tel Aviv, much smaller than Tokyo. So the life here is pretty calm. Um, I have a wife, Mo, and two daughters, Elia, which is seven years old, and Mila, which is four, going to be now. And um, they're very cute. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically my music, I'm kind of coming from a musical home. My father is a, a classical guitarist, uh, plays uh, mostly flamenco, Spanish stuff. And uh, I think maybe that's part of it. So it also, I used to really collect music as a child and uh, started with hip hop a lot, old 90s hip hop. I moved to the USA, to the States when I was young. So that was my, in Philadelphia. Uh, that, like I think hip hop was my first real uh, obsession with music, started really collecting. And then when I came back to Israel, I was around like, like a teenager uh trans parties i started to get into trans parties because of the people that i hung around with good friends and um that's where basically it started and i have to say that in the area that i live which is like i said a suburb of haifa uh, there was also an a little act very small some of may have heard it called infected mushroom which was were starting their days uh, a few streets for me that i was just a kid back then i think that they were also not too old. Maybe Arias was maybe 16, 17. And they were like a very big inspiration because they made cutting edge stuff. And I was living in the same neighborhood. So I kind of looked up to them and got all the tips, which is amazing. I had like the best, uh, the best place to get like programs or tips. Uh, I can't say that I used it so much, maybe once or twice, but it was a big inspiration to see that something from a little town like this could grow and change, you know, change the world musically. That's what uh, the beginning of Infected Mushroom did for me. Uh, musically, I like everything, like everything uh, from uh, classical music to, to rock, to uh, old 70s rock, to Eastern music. I mean, I can't say what my style is because it's all just a, just amazing to me. Uh, there are great things in any style. And um, I think that is part of, I don't even say that I want to bring it out in my music. I just can't help it. You know, it was the same when, when Kobe and I did Loud. And uh, I think that was also what combined us two that we both really like different styles of music. Um, so yeah, I guess in my music, I try to never stop myself and just go any direction uh, that may fit or seem original, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. So anything else you'd like to know about? Uh, <laughs> how, uh, how, how old were you approximately when you started making psychedelic music? Like I said, it was like age of 15 when I just got back to Israel and, and my friends were, uh, we were all into like side trans parties. And yeah, I got the program that I, Impulse Tracker, it was called back then. We got it from Erz, uh, Erz Eisen, from Infected. And, uh, and I just started playing with it, but it wasn't se super serious. And then I had to go to the army like everybody in Israel needs to do. And I kind of forgot about it until I was about to, um, finish with it and then I realized that I'm kind of drawn to making music but I, I wasn't sure that it was just a dream I didn't think that it's going to be my life's uh, you know I just really wanted to make music and uh, I met some people who had studios and I kind of had some experience with that and then I flew to a big trip to South America with friends and that's kind of what people do in Israel uh, after the army. So I went to six months in South America, which were amazing. And so many things happened. But in the end of that six months, I decided 
that I'm going straight home to build a studio. And I did it in the first day. I, everything worked out. It was in a party, a big party called Solaris 2005 uh, in Brazil. Solaris, uh, Du Serena and uh, Rafael. Yeah. Really, really a uh, big event. It was beautiful. First time I seen like 5,000 people or I don't know how much was there, how many. <clears throat> Colorful and dancing. And I just, one day after that, I flew back to Israel, built a studio. And the first track I made standing up. I didn't even bring the chair. That's how how I was how how electrified I was. I couldn't <laughs> even sit down. Uh, so yeah, that 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 whole six month trip after the army with the last day in this huge party, all that together it just got me <laughs> flown back to Israel and and that's it. I just decided that I uh, fulfilled my dream and I'm a musician now. And I didn't care that I didn't have any money or anything, but I was a musician. That's the mark of a true musician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, really amazing times. Uh, if I could only find these tracks these days, the recordings, I'd be very happy. I'm sure there's some some gems. Um, also, I don't know, that, uh, two months later, I met up with Kobe and we started Loud. And our biggest hits, uh, like Small Talk and Machines, they they all came from that few months. So it was really a magical time, very naive and uh, and very um, before you get into the scene, you know, your ideas are yeah, yeah, yeah. only for the love of it. So it, I, I, I always remember these times for for amazing times musically. COVID-19 stuff. Um, I'm sure that's affected you uh, both personally and um, musically. Could you kind of. Just catch us up on what's happened with you. Wow. Well, I mean, it wasn't easy, of course. But, you know, first of all, I have to say that not many people know it, but one year before COVID, I kind of stopped with touring. We were touring very hard with Loud. And I said, OK, I can't do it anymore. So I had my, I did my own kind of COVID before that. So <laughs> one year I was just in the studio making sounds. I wanted to live like those big bands that go touring and then go back to the studio. So I really want, wanted to make music and do nothing else after years of touring. And by the time that I finished, I was ready. Believe me, I was ready to, to jump back on the plane and start touring. And that's when COVID hit. Mm. So I'm not saying that I'm a special case. Of course, everybody had amazing. I mean, everybody had really big problems, but that was my story. Um, I was really ready to go. And after I've already missed it for a year, missed the crowd, I think the album was even called Wisdom of the Crowd. Um, it was really, I really wanted to reconnect. And then COVID came and I, I, I can't say I was depressed, but one day after, like very fast, I sold all my gear, all my studio gear. Oh. Now I um, built a new studio, but... Yes. I just wanted a clean slate. Like I didn't even know how to, after that year, I didn't even know how to take COVID. So I wanted like a clean room, nothing. And just to think about what, what's to be done now. And um, yeah, you know, did some other stuff, a lot of projects, internet projects, samples, sample websites, uh, a lot of artistic things. Uh, try to stay in touch with the crowd through social media. Um, in, in like creative ways uh, so yeah and also I have to say that so much time with the family was also really great because I did, like my first daughter I didn't get to experience her growing up as much as I got to experience my younger daughter um, it doesn't matter they both like mommy more anyway but uh, <laughs> but really it was something that uh, it was kind of a gift so that's one good thing that I can say about uh, the corona and uh of course i hope that uh, everybody stays healthy that's the most important thing after all um yeah so we're healthy that's that's good so we can only say thanks uh miss the parties there were a few small events that felt like festivals to me in the corona times when you were playing to 50 people it felt like fifty thousand because you know that's that's just the way it was so 
maybe it was also very good for proportions. You know, I think we, I learned a lot about, uh, about life, about everything mm. in the Corona time. So let's, let's just hope that everything, you know, goes up from here. Yeah. The kind of specific differences between these two projects of yours, uh, do you use perhaps different um, production methods and uh, what do you have in store for these two separate sets that you'll be uh, bringing to us on uh, that? Um, well, my, my procedure of making music or playing is not different. Doesn't matter what, what project I'm going to do. You know, I am myself, I'm one person and that's one way that I do things. Uh, of course, um, collaborations always affect the way you work. And I try to do a lot of collaborations always. Like it's very uh, mind opening for me. And it's very nice that, to find the middle ground between uh, two or three people. It's uh, super inspiring. Step out of your own head. But I think that what defined for me the different projects is not how they are made, but maybe the essence of the project, maybe the why they were made. And in that way, Out of Orbit, Ethan Writer was something that was always there, even with Loud, even with... What I like about this project is that it's... I, I wanted to make one thing that it's always going to be organic. Mm -hmm. Even my Facebook page, my other people opened it up for me when I didn't want to, you know? I didn't ever try to push it. I only tried to release things that are 100% me, like that I feel 100% comfortable about. Um, so, you know, so it will always stay that way and not be in a rush, like a career rush. I have to release a track now. I have to release a track tomorrow. I didn't want that. And Out of Orbit was a project that had a little bit of rush in it, but a good rush. I was really eager to do it all these years. I wanted to do a project for the people in the Cytran scene. And I wanted to do my best, mm -hmm. the best thing that I can ever do. Try, at least to try to do my best. And that was the, the little rush that I had about it. So in terms of, I don't know if maybe it's a bit deep, but it's not really easy going like Ethan right there. It was more like a mission project. Mm -hmm. And um, w from, from really missing the crowd, when I stopped touring with Loud and everything, when, when we stopped it, I didn't know that I even missed the crowd. I was just looking for maybe other things in life. I didn't even know if I want to make trance or music at all. But suddenly, you know, I just felt a strong urge to, to, to you know, to meet them again. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and that's how Out of Orbit was born. Mm. You know, and... Uh, Wisdom of the crowds exactly show how much I learned from them throughout playing. They are for me a, a big part of, of this creation, this album. And um, yeah, yeah, that's that's basically how I separate the two. Uh, I, I can't say which which one. Uh, yeah, but you know, well, if there will ever be another state of mind, there will be a third project. You know. Yeah. So the Out of Orbit project has a home at um, Shamanic Tales, which uh, is Asterix, Asterix's label. Um, I think a lot of people would want to know about your um, or kind of relationship with Asterix. Um, okay. Yeah, like any <laughs> any stories together. And uh, we'd also you know, like to know the kind of uh, lead up to uh, releasing from Shamanic Tales. Okay. Remember when I told you that uh, I, I got back from this party in Solaris in, as a kid in, in Brazil and ran to the studio to make music? The DJ that was playing in that set was Avi Asterix. Wow. I actually remember the end of the set. And that's, I remember the moment that I decided that I'm going to make music. And it was in an Asterix set. And, you know, I have to be honest, it's not my, when it comes to Cytrans, my personal style is much more towards uh, extreme sun kite uh, hallucinogen this is my personal you know i like uh, you know for me when when people were like 
talking about loud, I was used to say, forget that, listen to song kite. You know, I always like the past. Uh, and I, I understand how people like the modern stuff, like what we do today. But, um, but something about the person, Avi, and what he does and, and everything, it just sparked something in me. And, and I really believe in, in um, things that, you know, grow organically, like you like said before, and, and uh, naturally. So it felt really right. Avi called me because he heard that I was doing the album. So, and, and we talked about it. And he knew that I was not sure what I want to, where I want to release. I was actually going to release somewhere else, almost completely sure about it. And he told me, listen, I'm opening a label. So we talked about it and, um, and it felt like the, the really the right place to do it. And, you know, besides, I have to say, he's super creative guys, always inspiring. And um, throughout the years, I think that. To be honest, uh, you know, he, he helped uh, even us a lot as loud and, and yeah, just a good friend, you know, a good friend. Yeah. Uh, I, I really like the guy. That's, yeah. that, that, I don't think there's a better reason <laughs> than that. <laughs> that makes total uh, Yeah, I really like the guy and I believe in uh, what he's doing. So I think uh, I think we have a, a vinyl copy of the album. Uh, this, this is a pretty awesome artwork, by the way. Uh, a... Oh, you know who did it? Who? Oh. It's time to say hi to, you know, Beeple? Beeple? Oh, I know. Yeah. Well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Beeple. Yeah, he's now a billionaire, right? From uh, NFT. He is a very famous uh, VJ and creator. Yeah, works with Elon Musk. And, uh, oh. Yeah, so That's great. he gave us the discover for a small price. And, and the, there is the... The designer that took it all, her name was Natalie, Israeli mm -hmm. designer. She's very talented. So she took his picture and she made the whole mm -hmm. uh, product mm -hmm. around it. And uh, yeah, Beeple uh, mm -hmm. is now a super, super uh, rich uh, yeah. artist. <laughs> yeah. Ageha was always uh, of a club that, that I wanted to play at and it happened a few times. So I'm super thankful for it. And it was just great. I mean, um, it's big. The, the sound system, everything about it was just uh, was just great. Um, yeah, I miss it a lot. Uh, honored to be playing there at the, at this event. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, thanks uh, for all the great uh, times you gave people. I would say, and the the opportunity to uh, for 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 us to play our music, you know, to others. That's uh, it's important. <laughs> it's important for a lot of people. So, um, and, uh, and as for uh, Japanese uh, people that are going to come to listen to my music, this is so embarrassing. I haven't, I never invite. <laughs> but if you, I can only say that uh, I put a lot of uh, thought behind my music, and a lot of that thought is about the listeners which are you guys, and uh, that's, that's, that's how it works. And that's the reason I, I work so hard on making it sound, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't happen without this. So I can't, uh, I can't wait to, you know, to do this again, to do this type of communication, playing music, listening to music, dancing, wow. you know. Um, unfortunately, I cannot be there physically, but the music is more important. In 12 okay. days, we connect in a uh, virtual set. Yes. Nice. Yeah, Zoom. Nice. Like, uh, so, you can uh, see dance floor from the Zoom, and we can see you from the big screen. And it's so going to be yeah. like, uh, yeah, you did try you... to. Real so cool. Like, so, ah, ah. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, man, I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could be there uh, for real, you know. But uh, some other time, like we said. Yeah, yeah. Thank I have to run know. back. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, guys. Bye -bye. And uh, um, ciao, ciao. Great to meet bye -bye. you. See you very soon. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you. <laughs>